I'm George Donnelly, a science fiction author, and um, I'm restarting this uh, author vlog in order to document the process of uh, restarting my indie publishing science fiction author career. Now, I got started the first time in uh, 2013. <clears throat> I wrote a few books, I edited uh, a few anthologies, and then um, I and I, I gotta say, I didn't really see uh, any meaningful success in terms of sales. Um, and I think the main reason is that I wrote from my intuition. So I wrote what I what I wanted to write, and um, and and I didn't put anything into marketing. I really I did almost no marketing. I focused on producing more books. And I treated the series ideas that I came up with as uh, like trial balloons. So I'd write the first book in a series, put it out, and it did so-so, so then I lost interest in finishing that series. Um, I didn't try to write to market, well, just a little bit, just a little bit, maybe not enough. Um, I had nice covers, nice enough, I think. Changed my covers uh, once or twice. Um, I could use more work on the blurbs, definitely. Um, another thing I did not do that I realize I need to do now is uh, have an explicit hook scene. Not just start my story, but um, you know, import really an action scene or an extra scene. Uh, from somewhere deep into my book, uh, you know, perhaps the second most popular, or sorry, second most exciting scene in the book, and drop that at the front to grab reader interest. I didn't really do that. <clears throat> so, uh, you know, I just kind of hit a wall with my writing. I think in 2016, I got like a third or half the way through several books, and I just, just crashed. Um, I did build a mailing list. I got that fairly organized. I've got around a thousand subscribers. Um, <clears throat> I do have some loyal readers. I do have some very nice reviews. Um, so anyway, what's, what's my strategy for restarting? Restarting my career, this is 2017, August. Um, my strategy is, first of all, to write to market, to consciously write to market. To instead of treating this as kind of uh, an intuitive thing, a pure artistry thing, I'm going to try and balance the art with the business. I'm going to try to consciously do that. Uh, now, at first, the, the idea of writing to market, uh, it just made me want to puke. Um, I've read some, some books that certain people have written about that and been utterly underwhelmed both by their books about that, about doing that, that are directed to authors, and both by the books that they put out there as prime examples, fiction, works of fiction, as prime examples of uh, being written to market. <clears throat> so I'm highly skeptical. And in fact, um, I just listened to a podcast, a self-publishing podcast, I think it was number 208, uh, with Johnny, Sean, and Dave, uh, three guys I've been following for years. I respect... Uh, both their, their artistic um, instincts and uh, their business. I think they're, they're pretty savvy with business. Um, and even though they were, they were you know, giving uh, a forum to the concept of writing to market, they were, they were highly skeptical of it as well. And I'm not sure that they have... I think they have a lot of work out there. First of all, they do have a lot of work out there, but I think a lot of that work is not written to market. They wrote it the way I did, the way I, sorry, they, they wrote it from the same, uh, with the same kind of artistic, pure artistic, or pure, purish. In, in, okay, what I'm trying to say is they weren't writing to market a lot. So anyway, um, <clears throat> not to compare my work to theirs at all. Um, so, I'm, I, that said, so what am I doing to write to market? Well, step one is um, I picked up, I think it was Kindle Spy, and I tried using that. I found it to be completely useless. I just didn't find it to be giving me any kind of information 
that I could use. Uh, I'm not. I'm. I'm def. I'm not gonna try and chase a trend like uh, some people are. I, I find that I want my work to be um, to be significant. I want it to be lasting. I I'm not writing something just to to hit a trend uh, today. No, I'm not gonna do that. So. Um, <clears throat> forgot what I was saying. So, but anyway, oh yeah, so the Kindle Spy, I didn't find it useful. I returned it. I didn't get anything of value from it. Um, so then I tried a Kalytics report on the science fiction uh, and fantasy genres, $27. Uh, that I found a lot more useful because I think it took more of a, a big picture view of the genres it showed uh, movement in a whole bunch of different things over time. Interest in uh, the subgenres of science fiction, um, the, the average price, uh, things like that. And they also identify in their subgenres of science fiction. I probably do it, they do it with other genres as well. So if yours is not science fiction. Uh, they uh, identified in their subgenres of science fiction that are uh, primed for growth, underserved, uh, good candidates for writing. And so one of those was uh, Galactic Empire, um, Galactic Empire science fiction. Um, I think military science fiction, which is kind of similar, I think that was one of the ones that was a perennial favorite. That was. They had a few different levels, uh, genres that are trend, subgenres that are trending down, subgenres that are prime candidates for getting into, and subgenres that are big, always selling well, and therefore it's it's hard to break into. But if you do break into it, you've got a huge marketplace there. <clears throat> so since uh, my son right now uh, is fascinated by Star Wars, he. I mean, he's just going so deep into Star Wars fandom, and I've been wanting to call, because he, and he's a writer as well. He's um, he's already produced several uh, Star Wars fan fiction novellas all on his own, and um, so I I was working with him to do something kind of Galactic Empire ish, and so what I've done is I've I've, de I've decided on Galactic Empire, and then. I took some of the things I was working on with him, removed the Star Wars focus, and I brought them into, um, into my new story, which I don't have a title for it yet. I'm calling it the Courage story. Because uh, another thing is, I think theme is important. A lot of people focus on plot, uh, tropes, characters, but I think theme is also important because I have run through... Uh, read some very popular um, indie uh, fiction and uh, it's got great action but uh, at the end it is not memorable it is it's just not memorable and I want to write something that's memorable you know and so I think theme is a part of that equation so anyway um, so then I went to um, on a regular basis I went to the top sellers the best sellers on Amazon in the Kindle store in uh, galactic uh, empire science fiction, military science fiction, because that's pretty closely related. Um, and I started reading some of those. Now, I, I, I'm still in that reading phase. I don't know. I, I, I'm in one book right now. Uh, I'll probably uh, write a review of it later. And it's, it's got some interest. It's a very, very well selling, um, prolific author indie author. Um, it's got some elements that I'm enjoying and the rest of it is, it's like a lot of fiction, it's just not memorable. And it's not just indie fiction, but a lot, I've read traditional fiction, traditional trad pub fiction that is just not memorable. Which is also why I recently picked up the new Donald Mass, I think that's pronounced correctly, I'm not sure, book, The Emotional Craft of Fiction, because I think another huge part of that uh, memorability equation is the emotional component. Um, character growth. You know, like if you think of Lost, the TV series Lost, um, I, which I just rewatched. 
Um, I had to cancel my Netflix subscription because it was seriously getting in the way of my productivity, let me tell you. Um, Lost, if you think about Lost, what happens on the island is full of mystery. And, um, you know, I think that keeps you watching, that keeps you wondering. Apparently contradictory things happening, unresolved uh, mysteries going on for a while, being resolved, and then new ones, new loops opened. Um, but what really gives it that punch is the backstory that they show in little snippets at just the right moments in between the action on the island. And uh, that's the kind of thing that really hits you emotional, in the emotional gut. So anyway, so that's something else I'm doing. So, uh, so yeah, so far that's how I'm launching. Oh, and, um, you know, I'm, I'm an outliner. Uh, I'm... I plot, and but I try to pants individual scenes. Uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll show you my outline. I'll give you a little rundown of that uh, so far. I'm about 50% through the outline of the first book in this Courage series. It's going to be a three-book series at a minimum. Uh, I've got an artist lined up to do the, the artwork for at least the first cover. He did the, the artwork for uh, another indie science fiction author's cover. And uh, I was blown away by that uh, fellow author's cover. And uh, this fellow author, I haven't read anything by him yet, but he is very, he's very prolific and he's very active in marketing. Uh, so that's, that's somebody I'm looking to emulate. Because really, I need to get off my duff and, and do a lot of marketing. Um, <clears throat> So uh, let me uh, jump to show you my outline, and then you can expect a new vlog from me uh, every, roughly every Tuesday or Thursday. Thanks. Thanks for watching. I do appreciate it. Okay, so um, in order to plan this story, the first thing I did was I spent uh, a few weeks, actually, uh, just writing a ton of notes, uh, just freeforming it. Um, and I, I started with the idea of a portal, of someone falling through a portal to somewhere else. And this is galactic science fiction, galactic empire science fiction or military science fiction. Uh, and one of the, after I had the basic story clear in my head, um, <clears throat> I wrote the blurb. And here's the blurb I've got so far. A desperate young man, a portal to another galaxy, one chance at greatness. Dag Smith swore in front of his mom, his crush, and his entire hometown of 20,000 people that he would make it in the Big Apple. But in job interview after job interview, he is rejected. At sunset on, the, on his last day, he crosses the George Washington Bridge to admire Manhattan one last time, before heading home a pathetic failure, until a weird fellow in a gray suit offers him a chance at greatness and a $10,000 signing bonus. All he has to do is step through the portal. But what's on the other side? The rest is just sales stuff. Uh, but that's the basic story idea. So I wrote the blurb first, and this is kind of an idea. Well, actually, I, I believe I came up with the concept first. Uh, and the con Yeah, like I said, the concept, a guy falling through a portal. Uh, to another place and basically the concept is like a Larry Brooks uh, story engineering kind of thing you can read his books to story engineering and story physics are his two books that touch on that um, and then the premise then I came up with the premise so coming up with a concept and a premise are ideas I got from Larry Brooks and his books are, are a bit hard to to read because honestly these are very important ideas the concept and premise and coming up with them first, but he doesn't always do a great job of, of explaining concept. Um, he gives some decent examples, but he really just does not do a good job. I had so, such a hard time understanding that. Uh, too hard of a time. Anyway, but I still recommend his books, Story Physics and Story Engineering. Um, he, also, he also will, for a certain price, um, look at your concept and premise and give you feedback on it tell you whether it really is a concept or premise or not. And I, I used that service a couple times and I found that useful. But anyway, uh, I'm not getting paid for that recommendation. Um, 
But anyway, I came up with the concept, and then I came up with this premise. Uh, basically, uh, you, the concept is kind of like the 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 unique thing about it, about the story, the the backdrop to the story, the thing that gives it some some idea ish depth. Yeah, I'm not too. I'll explain concept another time if if you guys need that. Uh, and the premise is basically what's going to happen in this story. Uh, the blurb is just uh, a glance at the concept and uh, everything that happens up to your first plot point. Um, if you're not familiar with first plot point, uh, plot and structure by, uh, what's his name, James Scott Bell, I think, uh, is, is where I got that idea from, the first time at least. A lot of people have that idea. So uh, I came up with that, that blurb. And then I have a huge plan here. And my uh, so I'm shooting for 100,000 words because uh, in this military science fiction and whatnot, the books tend to run longer. So that's a result of writing to market, um, that decision. Because before, I, I've only written one book that was actually, it was 97,000 words that was aiming at 100,000. And uh, I didn't actually want to do that again, but I'm going to do it. And uh, by the way, I'm using a Ulysses to write this. Ulysses is an app on the Mac OS X that I'm really liking uh, right now. So th this this outline is only about halfway done, and it's um, already 33 pages. Okay, I I actually have an outline for a book that I did in 2013 with a, a friend of mine that I still hope to finish writing someday. I'm about 30% through writing it, but the outline itself was 120 pages. I don't know. I like to know where I'm going. I like to know that I'm hitting all the bases, you know? I like to know that I'm not going to end up with an incomplete story. So um, I've got a very complete uh, plan here. Um, and I bro break it up into, I break the uh, story up into four parts, which is an idea for, I got from Larry Brooks. And I think it makes a lot of sense. Other people. Uh, break stories up classically into Act One, Two, and Three, um, and Brooks bas basically breaks uh, Act Two into two parts, which makes sense. And um, also, I think it was James Scott Bell. I think that's his name. He makes a big deal about the midpoint and what he calls the mirror moment. And um, I, I think that's also something that's very important to note. And breaking it into four parts, uh, I think. Um, enables me or helps me to avoid that sagging middle and and missing uh, the midpoint because the midpoint is an important place. So for each part, I I, I want to know first of all like where he where he starts and where he ends up, you know, because it's so important that a character changes uh, is always changing, even uh, from scene to scene. There needs to be a change, some kind of change for the character in their, their, their personality, in their approach, in their goals, something that changes from the beginning of a scene to the end of the scene. And from the beginning of a part to the end of the part, and obviously from the beginning of the book to the end of the book, the character change is so very important. Um, so I've got the hook, and, he, and I've got the parts broken up by what, I, what I'm trying to do for each group of, of scenes within a part. So, for example, uh, let's take a look at scene two. I'm building desperation here because the decision to step through a portal, um, you know, not many people are going to do that. You know, some weird guy in New York City comes up to you and he, some autistic screecher or whatever. And he's like, jump through this portal. And, you know, he's offering you a $10,000 signing bonus, but you're like, uh, you know, my life is worth a lot more than that to me. So we got to build some desperation. So um, in my scenes, I use something I learned from um, in Techniques of the Selling Writer, which is written by Swain, Dwight Swain, maybe I forget his first name. Uh, that is a oh, that is such a jam packed book of uh, so jam packed of useful information. I n I need to read it again, frankly. I've read it several times, but anyway. He says there are scenes and there are sequels. Uh, there's, a, there's a book by Jack Bickham that actually echoes, and it's called Structure and Plot or Plot and Structure 2, something like that. Scene and Structure, I think, by Jack Bickham. 
Um, and it was in KU recently. I don't think it is anymore, but it was. It, um, but anyway, B- Bickham's book basically summarizes uh, most of the important parts of Swain's tome in, uh, in a very shorter and more easily digestible format. But basically, there are two kinds of scenes. There's the scene and there's the sequel. And in, in a scene, your character is actively trying to do something. He has a goal, and that's this, this G. He has a conflict uh, or an obstacle, if you want to call it that. And something's getting in the way. Uh, something is frustrating his attempt to achieve his goal. And he has a disaster. Yeah. Uh, every scene should end in a disaster. Every scene, things should get worse in one way or another. Even if, even if that worse, even if that disaster is almost a mirage, it, it has to be there, you know. Even if the disaster just means the characters are like super extra scared, uh, even that works. If as long as you don't over rely on, on that kind of drama. So that's a scene: goal, conflict, disaster. So that that's how I I, I outline mine. Uh, I've got a goal, conflict, disaster, and then I write a summary of the, of what happens. And then, so those are scenes. Uh, And then there are sequels. And uh, sequels have a uh, a reaction. Yeah, reaction. So the character is reacting to the disaster of the previous scene. You know, things went horribly wrong. Somebody died. Uh, I'm going to run off into the jungle and uh, cry and uh, beat my head against a rock and try to kill myself. Uh, whatever whatever the reaction is dilemma okay now your character is obviously has to be likeful and uh initiative taking you know otherwise the whole story is going to fall down most likely so he's got a dilemma he's not going to kill himself um he's going or or maybe that is his dilemma you know maybe he's faced with a situation where the villain says you know either you off yourself or i'm gonna kill uh your girlfriend your best friend uh, your mother you know so anyway he's got a dilemma you know the the disaster from the previous scene has left him with a choice uh in this scene it's whether to return to his hometown or not this is my main character and uh the d the third d or sorry the second d here is decision he has to make a decision so basically, a sequel um, scenes are very proactive. Scenes are more deliberative. Reaction, dilemma, decision in the sequel. So, uh, so here in this sequence of scenes, I've kind of built his desperation, and now in this sequence, I've got to sock it to him again in order to, to build his decision to step through the portal. So anyway, that I'm about halfway through this. Uh, I I'm also an editor. And uh, I also do website work for authors, uh, marketing, email marketing, stuff like that. So I, I have a bit of a conflict. I, I didn't have success with my writing. And um, so I started doing work for other authors. But now how do I, you know, how do I, I getting that discipline back to get up every morning at 6 a.m. in order to, or 5 a.m. to to put in three hours a day on my writing, my own writing is a challenge. So I'm hoping this vlog will help. But anyway, this has gone on long enough. Uh, I'm going to wrap this up here. Uh, If you have any questions or thoughts for me or random encouragement, you know, just drop those in the comments. I'd appreciate that. Um, I have uh, read quite widely in, in, in craft and been working on my writing for decades. So, uh, you know, I don't know, Feel free to use me as a resource and uh, thanks.